Welcome back. We're going to try and fit this Milwaukee pack out, that Milwaukee pack out, some other bits and bobs that's turning up on the weekend. It's currently Friday. We're going to come film the rest of it on Monday. But my plan is I'm going to take this part of my racking out. All of this stuff and all these drawers are going to be integrated into these drawers. If you haven't liked the video already, hit the like button, subscribe if you have it. Nearly 100k already, then let's get on with it. Let's empty this out and let's see what room we've got. Take all this out, yeah take everything out. So this is the issue I've had over the years. I've had this in for nearly four years now and it worked like a treat amazingly. But over the years, we've, they've been smashed, they've been banged, they fell out and they worked really well for a little bit. But it's time, it's time. This is our PPE up there. Why is that sticky? What if I just put my hand in there? Oh no. Sockets. I can do a CT1 draw. Oh my word. It's going to be delightful. Uh, it's your mum's dancing pole. Oh yeah. That's right, that reminded me. Is, like I've said, with the wooden racking, is over time, the self-tappers fall out. Look, look, even the bulkhead's moving. That's coming off. That's going to be a pack out. You have to walk the little... Um, you know what that reminds me of? Don't. Don't say it. Uh, the little grids. What are they called? The uh, mounting plates. The mounting plates. So it's a grid plate that goes to the wall that you can hook it on. The IKEA system at the back that I fitted years ago is coming off. And I'm going to put some grid stuff at the back that's going to allow me to slot these on. And everything that's within those are going to go in here, all labelled and accessible. That you can see from the front what's in it and what's not. We've had some problems so many times that they have fell out on the floor, destroyed everywhere. We've lost so many bits. So this should be an upgrade. And I know for a fact when I do this side, that I'm then going to start having to mess around with the one with all the cable drums on. So let's get this out. Look how much is wobbling. Oh, only, I'm no. only took one screw out. The one down there? There's one here. So I did put something on Instagram the other day. What's better, Stanley Stackers or the Milwaukee Packout stuff? And I don't think for price wise, and if you can do some sort of organizing system like this, you can beat these. I managed to pick most of these up at £25 for two, whereas one of the smaller ones, which is this from the Packout, that was 30 quid just by itself. But you do can do this. It's on, which is <laughs> I think to a minute it's really cool. What a sad day. Uh, I'm happy now that I didn't put any lights in this. Adam pass Adam the camera, you can see that I've put lights in if you're new to the channel. And all of the light, uh, the shelves there to light up everything so we see what we've got. But I didn't think it deemed it necessary in these ones because they're like concealed boxes, but should free up a bit of space. But my only concern, if I put two boxes next to each other, this, when we shut it, it's going to hit it. But we're only going to find out by actually doing it, unfortunately. That's my life. See you later. I'm shocked it lasted that long. Got all this space. Oh, that needs, that's gagging for some spray paint. Let me get some. Already then. Temp. Looks awful on this, but it'll dry better. Right, let's see how much I'm mushed around here. Taking out a couple out the back. Yeah, there's a few through there, and there's the main one through the bulkhead. It's still this attached. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. You're on the wrong hole, that's why. Wouldn't be the first time. I'd about to say I will miss this thing and it's been a delight, but I just put my hand on that nail there, so now I'm gonna throw it. Excuse me, Adam. Stupid thing. Oh, I missed. <laughs> Snapped your ankle nearly. <laughs> okay, so we've got that empty, we've got it cleaned. The issue we will have, which we won't get to today because we've not got the mounting plates, is the wheel arch comes up realistically, what, three quarters of an inch above floor level. I'm hoping with the mounting plates, when we put them on the floor side to side, I could possibly trim out the back, screw them down, so this will slot on and level it out. Worst case scenario, I will raise up the mounting plates off the floor by about an inch with some 20mm conduit, we'll screw, uh, screw down into the 18mm ply. But just to get an idea of what we're gonna do, and if it's gonna work, that will be going there, hopefully, because of the floors and level. But my issue I've got is this bar. And if I want to rack the van like I've got, this is going to be an issue because when you close it, it comes in. The only way I can physically get around that because this bar is intended to keep 
the door open. But one thing I do have with this door, which Adam would agree with, this door is very stiff. So you could leave it like this and it will stay. And if I wanted to rack around like this, I could, in theory, ignore the flashing uni light, just get rid of this. It's a possibility without having to shift all the racking out of the way. What I'm going to do is double stack them. So let's try height wise, see if this works. That's going to go there. I was hoping to put the shelf back on the top, or we have, which I will get in a second. So for my PPE stuff, these are empty Milwaukee pack out crates, is they will slot on there like that. So we still got the height, we can still reach in. If we want to get into the stuff, we just do that. Get the PPE stuff, take them to a rewire, put it back. You can put a divider in these if you get a shelf. And I've got two of them. So if that fits, my problem is just this angle here as well. Let me wedge the other ones in and see if they fit. Oh, it will just fit in. I mean, I could always trim a bit of the... Yeah, I don't mean the metal, I mean the the plastic but i've done this as well so when i want to utilize the van for family stuff or tip runs or moving stuff or buying stuff that i can just unbolt my racking at the back Throw and the just kids bikes in and stuff exactly like that. and go up the chase or you know this is my next thing i like my stanley stackers i've always had them and i built this unit but if there's a way that i could do this similar thing that side with the pack out stuff you know then maybe that's the, the next step right it's monday I've spent an obscene amount of money again over the weekend uh, on the pack out stuff. And in a little bit, once we've got, the way, got our wicked way with the van racking, uh, I'll run through pricing. But I have purchased three of the individual ones. I've got three of these, two are in there. I bought two of these massive ones and I bought that. And the lovely people at CEF, which I never thought I'd say. Um, I went in there this morning to see if I can get two more of these and they didn't have any stock. Uh, so they've just nipped out to another branch to pick me one up. So I'm going to get them in a little bit. So what we've decided to do with the bases that are on here, I was going to cut down across these metal bars to fit this in. But if I'm going to do the full conversion at some point into the Milwaukee stuff, that racking's going to go. So Adam's emptying it out. We put these in properly, screw them down, do what we want to do, and we can rejig the racking for now. But we're going to leave it empty. We're going to got these nice and empty i'm gonna get rid of this nice and empty the bulkhead's nice and empty so we can start putting our uh, modular bases on and we'll start clipping to it adam's then going to convert what is all of these which are the little tubs that we had into these so the bulkhead is no longer needed so yeah let's get to it we removed this rack in here this is the overhang we've got we're going to cut a piece of ply so we can level it up push it back screw it so this is where we're at we've cut some 12 mil ply coming across because we have the bulge, which I've said of the uh, wheel, the wheel arch coming up, we've had to bring it up. Uh, this should be 12 mil as well. We've created some edges, so that's gonna sit in here as well. That'll lip that up. Obviously it will be hidden with under it, same side. And then two packers just to pack it up behind this bit because obviously the wheel arch is only so big. So we're gonna get that out. I'm gonna spray the edges up, screw these together. I've got some more matting under there. So as and when I ever do wanna take these out, uh, some of it will be black still, so it doesn't look mismatched. Uh, so we'll get that out, get it screwed together, and I'll show you the process. Right, we need some CT1. As an electrician, I don't get much chance to use this uh, to what it should be. You look at all the carpentry channels, they all use it. So I want to stick this down. I'm going to try and get the right process. Stick this down. And then this is the activator. But they say if you have any porous material, i.e. wood or MDF, you should stick it on that. Just rubbed it across my arm. Cool. That's where you got one chance. Do we pinch this side down? Yeah, I think we'll have to trim it. I think. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's already rock solid. I purposely made this a bit shorter because I think we might have to cut the edge off, I'm not quite sure yet. Oh, that's really hurt my OCD, that has. You put one that way and then one the other way. I have to, because that's the wheel arch. Oh. Right. Ah, see? Right, let's go in there, put that back in, check it's all right, and then I'm gonna get some black spray paint. We're gonna just tidy up these edges and then we can stick some uh, matting down. Square down there. 
So the weight is now shared all the way across. And what we're gonna do is whack some screws down. So I'm gonna put the rubber on that now, get that cut to size. We'll spray it, we'll then screw this down to the 18 mil ply, and then we'll stick the rubber on top, and then we can get our mounting plates on that as well. And that should give us a nice square level top to work off. We'll glue this on in a second. Should go here. So what it is on the pack out stuff, you've got little nodules here and here, and on Adam's side, there's an indent. So it means we can line these two up, pretty much bob on where we want them. I'm gonna to come to this size as far as possible on this edge, line them two nodules up. I'm not sure, let me turn the uni light on, hang on. So the nodules there line up if you can see that. We've got them square on front edge. I'm happy with that. So I'll probably just get a screw in these front ones now. Is we'll that slide together, the, yeah? yeah, we'll slide the boxes off and then we can get the rest of the screws in. Also, thank you to someone, I think it was YouTube or Instagram, I can't remember. I was messing around with these and every time I thought they were in the way and they said you could just do this. <laughs> How much easier is that? Thank you, whoever that was. Right, so we've got them secure. Let's get this off and out of the way. And that's, so the, the plan is, if I wanted to do a tip run or go away with a family or kids or whatever, put something big in my van, I can get rid of my racking now. This will stay in its place and everything will slot back in. The weight of it won't tip it over because it's secured nicely to the base. And also as well, if we don't want to put these in for one day, let's say we just want to do a few smaller jobs and we didn't need all this stuff, Adam can just clip any of the smaller stuff, yeah. To be, yeah, get one of them, mate, and get me one of the um, crates as well. Yeah. It's got our bits in, so we can turn around, get us the new crate, mate, off the side, and just think, right, well, we'll just put a few of these in place, and we've got four. Oh, got these new ones as well. Yeah, it's got slim lines ones, these are the ones from CEF just, which can just on top of each other, and then the new boxes. Yeah, there you go. So that clips on as well, so we can put them on. Um, but these are only the three plate we've got. So we'll put some screws in, but that's the theory behind it. But we're going to start sticking on the back door in a little bit as well. Oh, and we're in. Look at that. Do you want to grab me two of them crates? Oh, this is going to stop the crate from this side, this bar. Yeah, grab me them two crates off the side, please, mate. The plan was so normally we kept our PPE or just little bits. We only need one, don't we? We only need one because I can put the other stackers on here, but I would like this to go on. Yeah, no. Uh, so that, what is in this? Is it just a wiring loom? I don't think there's more framework, is it? No, it's just because yeah. this bends around quite a lot. Is that not? Is that not going on either? Hang on. So knowing this is, we're going to undo everything we've just done because we've got to take all this rubber mat and that'll be stuck down now. We're going to shift it forward by two inches. Before it's screwed back down, just double check. I'm gonna take this off because that's a massive pain in the ass. But I wanna be able to put these boxes on top to replace the space of the racking that's behind Adam, which we're gonna lose because it was quite a vital spot for our bits and bobs that we don't use very often and the PPE. So we, we need it. So I'm just gonna undo what we've done, shift it forward and hopefully that's gonna work. So there we have it, we shifted it up. I'm really weird, like when we put this down, that bit just fell off. Like really clean cut just fell off there. So that's handy that that's out of the way. So moment of truth. Oh yeah, perfect look. Got yes. clearance. Hello. Sweet, right. Get yours in mate, pass that over. That's it. Anything I can see that might cause me a heartache, headache. Obviously this is just held in with plastic brackets and they're not like the super snug. You do get some rattling, so when I'm going over some bumps, we'll get some wobbling, but we're only gonna find out when we start driving it. Happy with that. Next thing is, I think I tacked the back door. Not, hang on, not your back door. The back door's in the van. Elephant in the room with this as well. This is in the way. So we try and shut the door. That is just, oh, I actually thought it might work then. Uh, I'm happy to take this off. I didn't realize with this as well, you could also just, put that there but because I'm gonna do a three-tier stacker which cost me an absolute fortune we're gonna take that out of the way I've got some we've got the weirer bit set I'm gonna get that off keep that safe so keep it you know, safe for the van and we'll get this mounted as well a lot of people ask me as well with the pie wood on the back of the van I put it on myself as you can see 
I just could it fit it to measure. So it's quite simple to do. It just allows me to utilize the whole of the back door. Obviously from here, you slam anything, it's gonna hit into this. Okay, three options we now just ran through. So we took that off, but I, like I said earlier on the video, these hinges have always been a bit iffy. The same thing that happens with all the transits, but since we put weight on it, it's decided to be really free. And it's already annoyed me four times when I'm sat in here, the door shut on me. Because of the angle, this piece of wood isn't flat. This base is twisting a little bit. Top one goes on fine, bottom one goes on fine. Middle one, I can do it with the bigger one, but the smaller ones, I don't know if they have smaller hooks or I don't know, but this one goes on okay. But the problem is every time I try and push weight on it to do it, the door opens. So I think we're gonna take that one off. Adam's then gonna put two singular ones. We're so gonna do- Go like that and have the two and then put one at the very bottom. Because it and does then, fit with a slimline tray, it does fit against the, the vault. Yeah, and then reinstate that so then it hooks into there and then it's We can the door put it back in. or I'm going to, depending on how annoyed I get, I'm just gonna get an angle grinder and chop the back of this box out so it will just open up normally. Or the other option is go like that, which you see quite I, I'm gonna try that. I think I like the look of that. Yeah. Let's try I've that one. Lots of people do that, I think. Right, that's on. We've only put two screws in. Big one fits, smaller one. Yeah, it's easy. Yeah, one. and I can get that back on. I do like the look of that. And if we wanted to as well, you can get, we've got another one of these singles. We can always put another two facing upwards as well. Yeah, so you just go. Yeah, there and there. Okay, I'm gonna put this back on for now because. At least it will support the door then. You know, if you're working and you're not gonna exactly. get someone's car or something. Yeah, that's their problem though. We're there, we're pack out kings. I've done something that you guys are not gonna like if you're massive Milwaukee fans. But just remember, I bought this with my own money, so. Very nice. We've had to put the slim ones below because we're next to the van vault. We put this back on, but uh, I made a slight adjustment. I could have moved everything two inches that way, but we've already moved it once and I, want, I don't want to lose too much space down there for racking. So I've cut that out. It's fine. Adam was not impressed in the slightest at all, but <laughs> no problem at all. So that it now, work, it so. does work really well and I can still get it out. It's still got its strength and integrity, so we're all right with that, but whatever, it's Milwaukee. Yes, yeah, look at this. Mill. Oh, I, I've only put two screws in this. We need to get this back off, so that's it. And then we've got one more thing. We're gonna have a play with the bulkhead. Many, many hours later and organizing this, I think we're done. We have lots of things to play with and tweak with, and I need some more stackers, but those two are empty. I've still got things to switch over and do, but we're running out of time. Cable ties, bits and bobs, first second fixed stuff. Works well with the slim bits. So that's done. We've got the framework up at the back. I still have a spare framework down there, which is gonna give this back door. But I thought for the time being, it's a bit, of, bit pointless because I don't have any more stuff, but we've done some organizing. So we have patrices, back boxes, knockout boxes, whatever you want to call them. We've got double sockets, a few switch spurs, cooker ISOs, switches. We've got one gang, two gang, dimmers, intermediates, shower pull cords. I don't know what's down there. Blank plates. We've got whisker boxes. We have got locking off kits in there. Going across to this side, literally those pendants. Uh, data stuff, USB testers, and data face plates. Earth tags, heat shrink, and then there's nothing in that side. We've still got a bit of spare space. CT1, crimp set, all round band. Up here we have, let me get some use to getting down because this is quite heavy. Label maker, drill pod, wander lead, uh, spare um, cartridges for the label printer. I've got loads of them. Up there is our PPE. I'll just poke you in the top, as you can see there. So that's working out really well. Doing this with one hand, left hand as well. These are really nice. So these ones now come down like that. And then these ones are coming up like this. And we'll take these ones around to show you around here. What I had to do was, re re I took out the entire shelving system. I had to slice off 10, 11 centimeters, I can't remember. Undid the lights, redid the lights, resprayed it, put the stuff back in. I shifted this over as well so the ladders still go in, but we can also get two of the pack out boxes, same as them, down here. 
cables, this, that, and the other. Moving on to this one, you buy it fully kitted out, so this is just a spare one. But then from here, because most of the stuff that was in the IKEA head, uh, head unit here is all disappeared within to this racking system, which is nice, frees me up some space to have this in, as much stuff as I want on there and there. And then one cool thing as well, which also happens, which I'll show you now. This is if I wanted to, if. Because I fixed this to the bulkhead with, uh, so I pilot drilled it. And then on top of it, I put, as well, I put some um, uh, like thick, like uh, they're called Optimax wall bite screws. And it actually hasn't pierced through into the fabric of the side. My, the original holes here and here had done, these ones haven't. So this is nice and strong. But with this stuff, if I wanted to, I can take some stuff in here. And if you've got two sets of it, obviously you've still got that side, that side. So if I wanted to put it there, if I wanted to put it there and have them accessible, or up top there, I can still go and put the system up there. So as long as I don't put really heavy stuff, I mean, this should take quite a lot of weight, to be honest. I really like it. I like the system. I like the variation of it. Uh, the only thing I don't like is the expense. It is, this alone, 50 pound for an empty plastic box. I don't know how much that is, but I'm gonna run through now a price list of everything I bought just for this video to show you guys here on, there's nothing wrong with Stanley Fat Max. I have lots of them here, here, all here. And it's always been a great, great way for me to organize my stuff, label it up and whatnot. But the bit that I've reorganized is the original plastic shelving that I used to have that I bought from b q three, four years ago, which is just absolutely trashed. I couldn't organize it properly. It was one big tub. At least with this, I can organize it well. And we've got some other bits on top. So yeah, costings. First of all, prices. I bought three of the two drawer stackers, which were 150 pound each. So there is 600 pounds worth of drawers. And then goes to these. I purchased three of these off Amazon and they were 26 pound each. They went to the single mountain plate, which was three of them and they were 33 pound each. Next was the triple mountain plate. That was 60 pound each. There's two of them, so it was 120 pound. And then the one crate that we bought there, I got it from FF, FFX, which was 40 pound. Next was these. So I had three of these mountain plates, one for here, one for here, one for here. I got them from Screwfix for £140. And then the two slim organizers from CEF, which are £35 each, so that's another £70. So all in all, the little build, if we just go off materials only, which is the, all the plastic pack out stuff, it's £1,147. I said I bought three of these, I bought four, obviously. It's four behind me. So it's an expensive addiction. A lot of people have told me if you have Milwaukee stuff already, it is an addiction through and through. And I will be purchasing quite a lot more to do with bits and bobs. And as you can see what I bought for Adam for passing AM2, which then cost me another 220 pound on top. So it's been an expensive couple of days, uh, but I think it's worth it just looking at this. I think it looks fantastic. Just need to use it, just need to play with it to see if we need to t tweak it ever so slightly, if this is gonna rattle too much when I'm driving, uh, if these drawers are all gonna get labeled and stay the way they are. But we will see this, well, we'll see it in future videos. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm very close to 100K. I will really appreciate it. Love you, bye.